Hello, today we're going to build a project where our enemy will try to follow us and whenever he touches us we are getting destroyed. So let's do it. First of all, I just want to show you what I already have. This is quite easy steps to recreate so you can do it on your own. I've got my enemy and the player which are pretty much the same. We've got sprite renderer on it. You can attach any sprite you want. I've got only dots. Widget body 2D will change the dynamic to kinematic so we can just use velocity moving our objects and then we want to add some circle collider as well so later on we'll just detect the collisions and this is our enemy follower I've got a child object with the little dot as well just to know what direction this object is heading to and the player is pretty much the same just different color I will change dynamic to kinematic as well and let's add circle collider to our player. We've got different scripts attached. I've got the player on the player and follower on the enemy follower. My player script is pretty much done. I've just made the functionality so that we can move it with the velocity. You should already know how to do it. If you don't then just copy it as it is. And now let's go into the follower script and as this is something we are going to learn today. So first of all we want to check what the player position or the target position is. So in order to do it we need to get some field to make this reference. Let's make it a serialized field and it will be of type transform and let's call it maybe target or maybe player target. So once we've got this position of the player we want to check it constantly so that this follower can follow us. We are going to do it in the update method. So here we need to create some vector 3 to know the difference between our player and this follower. So to make a vector 3 let's define it first so let's call vector 3 and we will just give it a direction name so we know the direction of this follower where should it follow so in the update use the direction and then assign the difference between the player and the follower so we are typing player target and we need to get its position and now we are taking away the transform position of this follower object. In order to move this player, this follower, we need to use rigid body. So let's get some reference to the rigid body component. So just type rigid body 2D and give it a name RB. In the start method, as we did it before, just get component and type rigid body 2D and add parentheses. Later on, in the fixed update method we are going to move this follower so just create fixed update fixed update and inside we are going to use rigid body so we are putting rb and here we are not going to use a velocity as we did with the player we have to use some different method so it can follow us or you know move to some position of our player and this function is called move position so just type it and inside the parentheses as you can see we need to specify some position and the position will be transform position because we need to change the position of this follower all the time and we will add the direction so this vector that making apart the player and the enemy so just type direction and now we have to make this vector normalized and probably we want to use some speed because our player has some speed already like 12 so we should define some speed of the enemy as well so just make a float and call it speed as well maybe assign some value to it like 2.2 for the beginning and we'll check if it's enough or not and then just multiply it with this speed. Save it. We are using direction normalized because we have to make this vector within some range because for example if our player was here so you can see that it will be moving on the 45 degrees so the direction would be good but the velocity will be different because this is 
that far from our player so it will be moving faster because the velocity would be different it would be like four units to the left and four units up but the direction is still the same it still will go on the 45 degrees to the left but if we move it so it's closer then it still will be going on the same path same direction 45 degrees but the velocity would be smaller because this vector will be smaller it will be like two to the left and two up so this enemy would follow the player but it will go not as that fast as before so that's why we make it normalized so it keep the direction but makes the speed the same all the time it doesn't matter if it will be far or close to the player and of course if this is something you would like to achieve that if it's far then the enemy is you know following much faster and when it approaching the player it will slow down then of course you might not use this normalized option but normally we'll try to use and normalize our vectors so it stays the same okay so our code is pretty much done let's just get into the unity and just press play and see if it this is working and this is not because as you can see in the console it says that the variable player target or follower has not been assigned so this is really important to know how to read those errors to know what should we do to fix it and we have to assign the variable player target of the follower so just click on the follower and here you can see that there is a player target field that says none and we have to assign our player to it so just assign it and press play and now as you can see this is getting crazy and why is it we have to add some more stuff to our fixed update method because we are using fixed update this is good to multiply it by time and then fixed delta time that should solve our problem and even if you type this move position let me let me show you i will just open some web browser and let's type it unity and move position and here if we check some unity docs i think uh, this is just move position and here if we go to the bottom you can see that uh, we need to multiply our vector which is direction in our case by time fixed delta time so this is a good tip how to use some methods so let's get back into unity and start again and now as you can see the enemy is trying to catch us but this is coming really slow so we might increase the value of the speed so let's do it let's just go back into the script and put it like maybe 4.2 we should add some functionality so whenever it collides with the player both objects will be destroyed so we might add this functionality either on the follower or, or the player i would do it on the on the follower let's say on the follower so we are using on collision enter just type on collision and use auto completion we might not use any tags at the moment but it is good to get used to the tags so just go back to unity click on the player and use the tag player like so go back into the code and we are checking if the enemy follower will collide with the player so if other because we are checking for this other argument that is provided in the parentheses and now we are using transform and then compare tag and if the tag is player then we want to destroy both objects so destroy and we want to destroy the other other game object and after it we will destroy this game object as well which is the follower so now it should be working fine let us have a look if it does let's open the unity and press play we'll try to run away and once we can't run away nothing happens why is that 
So it looks like that both objects are said to be kinematic in the rigid body, then this collision is not being detected. So in order to make this collisions detected, let's just change our player to dynamic and use the gravity scale to zero. And I'll just save it and do it again. So our movement is still the same. It doesn't affect anything. But once we collide with the enemy, we got destroyed. Whenever you are using some new methods or options, it's good to just, you know, go to Unity documentation and read about the stuff you want to learn about. And as we did with our kinematic, let me open it. And we couldn't collide because our player and enemy follower where rigid body 2D body type was set to kinematic. So in order to make this collision, we had to change our player to dynamic because two objects with kinematic couldn't collide. I will just show you that one more time. So whenever we are set to kinematic, it collides, but this collision is not being detected. But if you read it through, you would know that in order to make this collision, we have to change one of those objects to dynamic. Or if you scroll it down, there would be said that, that we can use the full kinematic contacts in order to make this detection with the kinematic types. So we can sort our problem by changing this to dynamic and that would do, but dynamic is not really necessary in our case because dynamic is used when you want to use like physics law and everything. And here we don't really want to use this physics law. We are just moving our player, but it's not bouncing from anything. It just, you know, move around. So we can use kinematic because this is not that heavy on the uh, system. So it's easier to, to use it. But if we want this collision to happen, we should use this useful kinematic contacts. And once it is ticked, if we play our game, we can just collide with other kinematic bodies. And this is working fine. So as you can see, there are plenty of different options that can be learned or read on the Unity docs. And this is a really good practice to, to read it through, to know why these options are working this way and how to use them to your purpose. And to be honest, when it comes about the rigid body and colliders, this is really crucial to know how they work because we'll use them in every game. I would spend few extra minutes to just check how to use them and to know more about them. And the last thing I want to do is to rotate the object so that it faces us all the time. That would look much better. So go to the follower and here we can use in the update method once we got that direction set, we will add an angle. So just create float variable, call it angle. And we are assigning some math 18.2 method to it. And inside, we are using y and x values of this direction vector. So just say direction y. And then after the comma, we are using direction x. And we'll multiply it by some other method because all we get from that method will be a value in radians, but we don't want to deal with radians. We want to deal with the degrees. So let's use math F and change rad to degrees. And in the end, we want to rotate it. So RB and then rotation equals to angle and save it. That should be working now. Let's go back to Unity and press play. So now, as you can see, our enemy is all the time looking at us and whenever we collide, we both get destroyed. 